Hey everyone, JT here, back with another video. As you can see, I'm still on my travels, but as we get towards the end of October, we need to start thinking about whether we're gonna stay on the Octopus Agile tariff, or are we gonna switch back to Octopus Intelligent Go? Now, as most of you know, I have a Solar Edge battery system, and I wanna make sure that that battery has a sufficient power to see me right throughout the day. So I need to look at the tariffs and make sure that what I'm gonna be using is absolutely right to make sure I don't run out of power at the coldest and wettest parts of the year. So with that, in today's video, we're actually gonna take a look at the Solar Edge battery modes. Let's dive into the iPad and take a look at the different battery modes. We can see right now, even though I'm not at home, we're generating a reasonable amount of power, but I've noticed in the weather forecast, the number of sunny days is being outweighed by the gray and the wet days. So I think within the next week to probably 10 days, we may need to think about changing tariffs. But in preparation for that, let's take a look at the battery modes that are available. So right now, we're running in what's called maximized self-consumption mode. That means use as little power from the grid as humanly possible, or as batterily possible. So the system is gonna supply as much power as it can as and when it's needed, and it's gonna try and use power either directly from the panels or from the batteries to supply all of our needs. Now that works great throughout the vast majority of the year, but not always during the winter, and especially as we're only about three weeks away from getting our heat pump installed, I suspect we're gonna to need to make sure that we're gonna be importing a little bit of power each day to make sure that we're, we're, we're running day and night off the battery. So that's maximized self-consumption. The next option is time of use. Now, the two, the, actually the next two options, time of use and manual control, would seem on the surface to do the same thing. But time of use is for people who have set time tariffs. So that means that between these hours, the energy is cheap, and when between these hours, the energy is expensive. And you just wanna be able to tell the system, this is when my energy prices are expensive, when the energy prices are cheap, i.e. these are not the times that you specify, these are not the peak hours, then by all means import power from the grid. So if you're on a tariff like Octopus Cozy or standard Octopus Go, uh, where you have a set defined period every single day of low cost energy, then you would use the time of use settings. And all you've got to do is put in when the peak times are and it will take care of the rest for you. Now, if you're using Intelligent Go, this becomes a problem because Intelligent Go, although it has a set period of, uh, I think it's 11.30 in the evening till 5.30 in the morning, you can get extra hours. If you plug your car in, an octopus deems that you need more time to charge your car, they may give you some extra hours. And obviously, if you've hard-coded in those peak hours, it makes life a little bit difficult. So the next option, manual control, gives you exactly what it says on the tin. It gives you manual control of your batteries. So you can define charging schedules and you can also define discharging schedules. Now we'll come on to discharging schedules in a moment, but the manual charging schedules, this is where maybe you have a set charging schedule put in for your standard hours. So from 11.30 in the evening till 5.30 in the morning, you would put those in as a standard charging schedule that will run every single day of the week. But on those odd days that you plug in and Octopus say, hey, there's some, uh, some free power available, you can get a lower cost if you charge between these hours, you can go in and add a, a one time or just as a temporary charging schedule on top of that. Now, if like me, you've also got an export tariff, that means that at some point you're gonna to wanna to discharge your battery. And if you think about it, if you're buying it in at seven and a half pence a kilowatt and you're exporting it at 15 pence a kilowatt, there's some money to be made here. So what I will do is, but just before the charging schedule starts, I will effectively discharge my battery. So I'll have a charging schedule that starts at 11.30 at night and runs till 5.30 in the morning. And then I'll have a discharging schedule probably set for something like 10.30, because I don't think I'll have that much power left at the end of the day, but I will empty the battery out just before the charging period starts. And that means I'll be making some money for any power that I had back in my battery as I push it back into the grid. Now the final one is backup only. Now 
I'm sure you've all seen the dreadful news from the US about the two hurricanes that hit recently, and there are people who still don't have their power reconnected. And this is really a, a setup that's designed for those kind of environments where you might have large scale power disruption. Backup only basically keeps your battery at 100% charge, and it only uses it when the, the grid goes down. Now, for this to work, you've got to have the Solar Edge backup interface, um, but it means that you'll effectively only be using your excess power. So once the battery's full, anything that your panels are generating, obviously will go into your house, but you will be running on the grid for the vast majority of the time, except when the grid goes down. So think about this for like emergency situations. Um, hurricanes is a great example. Um, fortunately, living in the UK, we don't see that many uh, weather events that cause this kind of damage. So yeah, we get the odd power cut, maybe maybe an hour or two, but we don't really need this. So backup only is not something that I use um, as part of my setup. But those are the four modes. Those are they're really simple. They kind of do what they say on the tin. But just be careful with the time of use and the manual control, as you might find that uh, you know one works better for you than, than the other. Well, I hope this has been useful. If it has, please do leave a like and subscribe. It really does help me build the channel. And if I'm lucky, I will see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.